Yo, what's up? Joshua Casper here. Welcome to part two of Syncing Music with Film. Right now we're inside of After Effects. I'm going to show you how to cut up footage and sync it to our guide track so we can start actually making the music inside of Ableton. Now I do it this way because I want it to be perfectly synced up with the beat. And like I was saying before in that first tutorial, if you just do it in Ableton and then put it in here and then try to sync it. Um, you'll have to do a lot of RAM previewing and for me I can't do that because of my computer only has two gigs of RAM and also it's a pain in the butt. But I found I, if I make a guide track like we did in that first tutorial I can actually visually do it. So I know that this is the start of a bar. I know that these are quarter notes here one, two, three, um, and I know that this is the start of the second bar. So I visually know, without having to do RAM previews every every second, um, where my hits are happening and stuff like that. Um, I just find it's an easier way to sync it. Uh, you could also do score your piece first, and then you bring that in, and then use both the uh, guide track for the visual cue, and then when you want to hear the music, do your RAM preview. Um, it's really up to you. It's all about um, you know preferences and whatnot and the ability of your computer. But uh, this is what I did, so I'm just going to show you how I did it. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. Also, uh, at the end of the clip, um, I'm using the ghost trailer here. At the end of it, it starts happening just quick cuts, and I'm just going to do a lot of time remapping for those. Um, that's really all I'm going to do because this is kind of uh, just to kind of get an idea of how to do it. Um, so I'm not going to do them all. I'll do a couple and then tell you that it's just to repeat the process. And you guys go ahead and finish that on your own. But let's go ahead and get started. Um, I want this Peggy 18 uh, thing to happen right on a one beat. So I'm going to actually just drag this clip over. And if I zoom in, I can see on the guide track that because of this weird tempo that we got by multiplying the frame rate of this clip, the clip was, uh, what does it say up here somewhere? Yeah, 23.976. I multiplied that three times and got 71.928, I think it was, but we rounded up to 93. And as you can see, because we did that, now when I'm jogging by frame by frame, I'm actually right on the, uh, the beat, so it's perfectly synced. So now frame this frame, there is no picture, and right where I drop a, a big explosion or something, uh, this graphic's going to show up. So I think that's pretty cool. Okay, and then I'm going to zoom out a little bit and just kind of find out. So here is where um, the first graphic comes in. So what I'm going to do is bring that to this Remember, this big bass hit was where um, the one drop of a bar is. So I want this clip to start right here. So what I'm going to do is come over here to where it first shows up. Off, on, off, on. And hit Control-Shift-D. And what that does... Oops. I just want to Control-Shift-D this, this clip here. What that does is it cuts it here and then starts it up here. So I think that's pretty sweet. So what I want to do is bring it over here. And then just bring the beginning of this clip over here. And if you look now, perfect. And we don't have a background right now. So what I want to do is come down here. New, solid, uh, comp size, black, perfect. Bring this down. And boom. So here we go. The graphic is up. And I'm going to pull it over. All right. So, boom, and then the second guy comes in like this, and then where's the third one? Here. So I'm going to go select this, control shift D to bring that up, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this over to, again, the beginning of a bar. Because I'm going to go with some Japanese percussion on this, so uh, having them at the beginning of the bar is really going to help me out. Pull this over. 
Boom. Boom. Okay, perfect. Now, the question is what to do about this. Um, I kind of want to sync the changing of this to here. Um, so what I want to do is come in, right click, time, enable time remapping. And this is going to bring up my time remapping settings. And I'm going to open this back up, the guide here. Bring it up. And it's actually only one frame off. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to click this. And I'm going to pull it over. See how it's happening now? So I'm going to put another percussive hit right here just to kind of go along with the switching of the graphic up here. And what I want to do is just come back here to make sure, yeah, we're still all good up here in the front too. Cool. And what I'm going to do now also is fade that out. So I'm going to come in here and hit U. Oops, T, excuse me. Set a clip. Fade it out. And then... So sweet, right? Boom. Now that might be a little bit too long of a, a black space or nothing there. So what I could do is pull this over and then come in to hit U to get my time remapping again and just kind of pull the opacity over like this. And then right when it flips, right before it flips, Another keyframe here, and then pull that over to the end. So now it'll just play a little bit longer and fade out. And then this comes right in. Cool? And then we're going to do that again. So I like this. Control Shift D. Bring it over to here. Make sure it's all lined up, pull it over, boom. And this is just going to be another one of the, the same technique as we used here, we're going to use here. So I'm going to go uh, right click, time, enable time remapping, I'm going to pull it over and hit keyframe. And keyframe. Cool. I kind of also want to kind of get a feel for how long. Uh, this black happens. So it fades out and then we're like at, I don't know, five frames or something. So I want to kind of mimic that up here so it's kind of, you know, keeping it the same. And we can also do that by using the guide track again, you know, to see how many beats of uh, just black there is. So if we want to actually sync that up, we could. Coming in here. And then we're going one, two, three. Okay, so th three sixteenths. And the fade process, let's have that happen for two sixteenths. So two sixteenths fade out, and then three sixteenths of black. We can do that same thing up here. Okay, so I want to go T to my opacity. Cool. And I'm going to hit U because we've got time remapping and I'm going to pull that over here. So 3 sixteenths is when it wanted to go completely to black. Capacity. Sweet. And then 2. Another keyframe. Double click here. 0. Cool. And 
if you see right here, that's actually a little bit off, so I'm going to just move that over. Cool. Fade out. Boom. Right on that. And come over again. So this is the process. Um, I'm really going to stop the video now because it's already pretty long, but this is what you're going to do. And you're going to do this and just try to keep it on time down here. So what I'm going to do is pause the video now and come back and just kind of run through what I've done when it's over. So uh, that way we don't have a 50 minute video of me just doing this process over and over again. Even though the clip is only like a minute long, um, it's better if I just do that off camera because I'm going to be repeating the same process over and over again. But that's the general gist of it. You want to use your guide uh, audio file down here to keep things on point and synced. So when we go in and start adding percu percussion and stuff like that in Ableton, um, everything will be fine. So anyway, uh, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so now I am all done here. And you can see after I made those first... Um, initial kind of fade to blacks um, once I got into up here where the cuts started happening a little quicker I uh, just did time remapping all on one um, one channel here so and uh, it's pretty important that um, I use the one drop when it starts just because uh, that's where the music can start getting a little bit more good uh, a little bit more intricate, a little bit more suspenseful, and everything will just start happening um, as you know things start going a little quicker. Uh, the crescendo up around here, you can see where these these cuts happen extremely quickly. Um, you kind of want it to be on a one drop too, because you can think about your build up here. That's kind of starting uh, down here with this guy. And then it goes there, you know, musically speaking, uh, it's just a good idea to have that happen, that that big crescendo happen on a, a one drop of a bar. Uh, it doesn't have to be. That's the cool thing about it. I don't think my original video happened on the one drop. Uh, there, are, there are definitely some inconsistency. It's not like a four to a floor. You can't mix it into a, a house beat. It's a little bit more natural. Um, I went a little bit more to the video, but it, it's not a bad idea if you're going to be using some house music or something like that when you're uh, making your videos. Also, another thing that was kind of challenging is I only had the trailer film to work with. I mean, when they made the initial trailer, they had longer shots of these people uh, and these of these characters to work with, and um, the frame rate was probably higher. So when I had to slow down the frame rate out here, you can kind of see. Uh, the frame rate is isn't as good as it should be. Uh, for most of it, though, I sped it up, which uh, looks a little better than slowing down using time remapping. But uh, obviously, if you have you know 60 frames per second is like the new normal. So uh, you know we're working with what we got here, and it was just a test to see what we could do. So uh, beyond that, uh, I just did time remapping, like I said. And if you zoom in on the uh, the helper track here, you can see that. Um, you know, it's happening on sixteenths, it's happening on half a bar, uh, quarter notes. Um, it's happening right where it should be. So now, the next thing I would do is I'd go in to um, just zoom out. I'd probably watch it one more time just to make sure, and then I'd come over here where it fades to black, and take the project size, shrink it down, could even uh, trim work to comp area. Uh, trim comp to work area, excuse me, and boom, yep, that's happening there, boom, 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 looks good, okay, so the next thing I want to do is export it so I can um, have it as a reference when I start making the music inside of Ableton, and the best way to do that is first come over to save it just to make sure, composition, add to render queue, and um, I don't need audio for this because I'm not going to be using that original audio. But I do need to come up here and choose QuickTime Movie because that's the format that Ableton works with. Hit OK. And uh, we could probably rename it. 
uh, Call of Duty, Ghost, JC Edit, something like that. Hit save, and then go ahead and click render. I'm not going to render it while I'm recording just because my computer will probably blow up. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and render it, and part three of this process will be starting the music with the film inside of Ableton. So uh, I hope you have Ableton, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, we will see you in the next tutorial.